Hi everyone, Stepan here. In today's video I'm going to cover a game I played against the Grandmaster in the Serbia Chess Open. Uh, he's an extremely experienced player. He's been playing for a while. He's 70 now, but he's, I think, still the coach of the Serbian Olympic team. A great player, uh, Abramovic Boško. And, well, uh, I had a tough time preparing for him because he mostly plays system openings. In this game he played the King's Indian attack, but he also plays different sort of g3, b3, c4, d3 setups, either the Hedgehog in reverse or the Nimtsov Arsen in some way or the other, or the English or the Reti or the King's Indian attack. So it's not really something you can prepare for specifically. And when someone plays a system opening and has been playing it for 50, 60 years, then they have a lot of experience in it. In this game, uh, Mr. Abramovich started with knight f3, I played pawn to d5, and g3, knight f6, bishop to g2, c6. This is what I usually play against King's Indian attack setups, or that I used to play. And here, the main move is bishop to g4. I sometimes play bishop g4, but I mostly prefer bishop to f5, getting a London system. Now this is slightly inferior to bishop g4, because of some, some nuances deeper down the line, but it's, but it's almost negligible, it's almost nothing. Knight bd2, pawn to e6, castles, this is all just... I, I'm not even going to say theory, this is both players co completing their setups, this is just normal, b3. Bishop to e7, bishop to b2, h6. This is all still normal, has been played a ton of times. Pawn to a3. And here I wasn't really sure what to do. Uh, this specific setup that white is playing for, of course he's aiming for b4 and wants to expand with b4 and break open the queen side. So a5 is the most logical move. And I'd almost played it instantly, but then I started thinking and thinking and thinking and ended up playing a very stupid move, which doesn't really make much sense. The point was, uh, I, in my mind, the point is stupid, but in my mind it made sense. Uh, when the A-file opens, uh, I'm going to play, uh, I'm, I don't want to trade rook, so I played rook c8. So I gave my move a double question mark. The engine thinks, uh, let me see. The engine thinks black is better here with a5, uh, minus 0 0.1. After rook to c8, it says plus 0 0.3. So it's not really a blunder, but conceptu conceptually it is a blunder. And uh, a5 would have made much more sense. This was sort of what I'd been expecting. a5, maybe he plays queen to c2, improving. I don't really know what to do here, so maybe I play b5 straight away. Maybe I just try to improve my bishop. Maybe I get my queen to c7, so I don't know, something like this, queen to c7, and then eventually I play b5. So that, that would be normal. Okay, and actually in this position a5 is the main, 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 main move, as I'd found out afterwards. Uh, the other move, it turns out, is bishop to h7, and after b4 you play a5 then. So anyway, I played rook to c8, and after b4 then I played a5. Okay, my opponent played queen to b3, I exchanged, and I was sort of happy that I don't have to trade rooks along the a-file, uh, which isn't really a big accomplishment, it's just stupid. Okay, uh, queen to b6, putting pressure on the b4 pawn, he defends with bishop to c3, and now I admit my mistake and go back rook a8. And after the game, Mr. Abramovich actually said, he pointed to the c8 square and said, rook c8, is that a new move? <laughs> And I was embarrassed. I mean, I, I think he was sort of trying to make a joke out of it. Of course, it's not a new move. It's a stupid move. But I still feel kind of bad when a grandmaster says, oh, is that a new move? Okay, queen to b2 played. Uh, rook f8 uh, because I want to... Well, my only hope if I want to get any activity is e5, e4. That's not going to happen, but my rook is still better on e8. Uh, he played rook f to e1, and now I did trade on the a-file, uh, because I don't want to allow an early e4. Bishop f8, strengthening e5, and here he plays c5. c5, I think, was a good move throughout this middle game, because it gives him this very nice pawn push with b5, which is going to destroy my queenside structure. 
Okay, I played queen c7, of course. He jumped in with knight e5, and I played b6. And in this position, he did play e4. And this is my first real blunder. And this position is still about equal. If anybody has a slight edge, then it should be white. But I still have enough. Uh, I could at some point, point take on c5. Uh, the center could blow open. I may as well get e5 in. I mean, my knights are good. My bishops are good. There aren't really any serious problems in the position. But here I blundered. Here I played bishop to h7. And I have to say I played bishop to h7 simply because that's the pattern I knew best and I didn't give this position too much thought. It's just in most King's Indian attack setups when they play e4 you just retreat the bishop to h7 you don't trade but this position is very specific. Also uh, after what happened next knight takes d7 knight takes d7 d4 now taking on e4 is even stronger. I think here if I take this should be pretty good for me. And now I retreat. Of course, he can never push e5, because if my knight ever gets to d5, then, I mean, if anybody's better, it's black. Of course, this pawn is extremely weak, so he probably has to trade. Now, this is weak. The knight is going to probably have to trade itself off. And this is, I think, a better version of the game. But I played bishop h7. And knight d7, knight d7, d4. And here the second blunder. Again, I have to take on e4, and my position is very pleasant. This is my analysis after the game. d takes e4, knight takes e4, I simply take the knight, bishop takes, and they go knight f6. What's the problem here? Let's say bishop g2 or bishop f3, doesn't really matter, and b5. And I'm going to put my knight on d5, and eventually, if if this if this is not dangerous anymore, I may go for e5. Alternatively, I could just get my bishop out. For example, I don't know, rook a6, knight e5, bishop d2, maybe bishop f6 uh, next, and trying to put pressure here. This is just a wonderful position. It's not better for black, but it's easy to play. I mean, the fact that he has these three pawns against these two doesn't really mean anything. There are no more pawn breaks or pawn pushes. But I blundered. I played bc, which is just a bad move. And after dc, of course, this pawn is moving forward, which in the other pawn structure could never happen. Ugh, so this was just bad. And from this point on, I just got snowballed away and lost the game without even fighting. And as soon as so this is what strong players do as soon as he got an advantage which is palpable and which he can build upon he just crushed me before this it was the game was equal and i, I think i played relatively well uh, apart from not taking on e4 and rook c8 fine but that's that's an opening mistake it's not really wouldn't cost me the game but as soon as this happened as, as soon as he got a clear plan forward I just I just felt as if the room was moving the walls were moving in around me and crushing me. Okay, I played rook b8 to prevent b5 or start preventing b5. Ed ed. And this is the problem. If you trade off these two pawns, the position is fine. Whew, okay, knight b3. Played and now just a move that makes no sense, but uh, I didn't really know what to do here. Probably I should play bishop to e7 and get my bishop here and do something like that. But I didn't want to play bishop e7 because he has bishop h3. And if this knight gets traded off, there's no pressure here once he pushes b5. And also he on bishop f6 he could just take. And we trade here and here and again this is just good for white this knight is going to sit on d4 for the rest of the game supporting b5 everything is defended this bishop is aiming at thin air the rook is coming to a6 c6 is falling the queen could actually just go c2 queen c2 queen a4 rook a6 put pressure on c6 take the pawn and, and game over so that in my mind wasn't a good idea uh, the engine says bishop e7 is the best move what I did just loses. I tried to prevent b5 by force with bishop to d3. 
but he simply played queen to d2 and I realized that I just cannot leave the diagonal because I'm going to get destroyed. So I went back uh, to g6. Uh, if I try to block, he has knight d5, but more importantly I'm just getting destroyed by the two bishops which are going to come into the game. Maybe even like this. and Or he could just trade it off. So I got too scared and I went back bishop g6, which is even worse. Knight d4, knight f6, queen f4, and here is the, the final blunder. I just... Okay, so my c6 pawn is hanging, <clears throat> my queen is hanging, my rook is hanging, and me, that's, I, sometimes I'm just such a moron, I played queen c8, and he just took knight c6, and I was, oh, okay, okay. Of course, if I take, he takes the rook. And this is about it. Uh, I played on for a few more moves. Rook b7, bishop f6, uh, queen c6, bishop c3, rook d7. There's basically nothing I can do. Uh, these pawns are moving forward. He just kept improving his position nicely. And bishop b4, queen b4. In this position I resigned. Uh, th there is nothing I can do. If I had six moves in a row, there, there would be nothing I could do. Because I can never attack this pawn from either side. I can never stop these two pawns. I'm just waiting to lose. So I resigned. And I have to say, I, I was fairly upset when I started analyzing the game uh, about this position. And not seeing that, uh, that the position after d4, knight f4, bishop e4, bishop e4, knight f6 is really good, is strange. I mean... This I, I could calculate easily in, in less than a minute. I could visualize this position. It's just that I didn't do it. I don't know why I didn't do it. I just didn't do it. And of course achieving this position would have been great because these two pieces aren't really too good. Uh, my knight can safeguard my pawn on c6 and my position is perfectly safe. But anyway, he, he's a very strong player. As soon as he sensed some weakness and got some advantage he just steamrolled me thank you very much for watching uh i hope you got something from the game hope you got something from the video and stay tuned for more chess bye bye